Hi, this is Chris, the SAT expert at Magouche. I've had over 15 years experience helping students out on the SAT. And today, I'm gonna talk about 10 helpful tips on the SAT math section. The first tip is know your concepts. Know what's gonna be actually on the SAT math section. You don't wanna be studying pre-calc if there's no pre-calc on the actual test itself. But if you don't realize that there's pretty simple geometry, circle basics and stuff on the test, then that's really gonna hurt you. The next tip is to know the test. What that means is the test is very specific in terms of what it tests in math. So you need to know that the test is gonna ask you a certain number of geometry questions. It's gonna ask you a certain number of basic algebra questions. You need to know how long it takes you to do, actually do these questions and get through the section. What's also important is one of these sections has a no calculator rule. And so just learning these little things about what makes the test different from other tests and what you're good at and maybe need a little bit of practice in will help you test day. The next tip is to know your weaknesses. We're all bringing in different experiences when we take this test. Maybe we did really well in geometry. Maybe we didn't like our geometry teacher. And so whatever it might be, you're gonna be good at something and maybe not so good at something else. And so you wanna sit down there before you begin your prep and really come up with this game plan about, okay, where do I need the most work in and what does the test actually ask me? And so if it turns out it might, there might be one probability question on the entire test and you're not that good at probability, maybe that's not the end of the world. But if you notice that you're struggling with trigonometry and you'll encounter three or four of those question types, then that might be a better use of your time. The next tip is grow your mental math brain. What do I mean by grow your mental math brain? Well, many of us typically use a calculator whenever we can. And what's happened is our mental math brain, the part of our brain that does mental math, it, it's shrunk. The thing is, and you might remember this from one of the previous tips, one of the sections on the SAT does not allow you to use a calculator. So you don't wanna get freaked out test day and realize, ah, I have to write everything out and do it the long way. So if, for instance, if you see 14 times three, instead of trying to scribble that into the margin and taking yourself out of the moment and out of the question, you can do it in your head as such. 10 times three is 30, four times three is 12. You add those both together, you get 42. So 14 times three is 42. Now that's a great strategy and there are plenty more that you can use, but you have to practice these starting today and doing a little bit every day to help your brain, your mental math brain grow. The next tip is to use the right resources. Why is this so important? Well, there are hundreds upon hundreds of SAT resources out there. Some, in fact, many of which aren't really that good and aren't gonna help you. So you need to find out what the best resource is. Well, the thing you have to use, no matter what, is the College Board Test Book. This is where you have actual SATs that students took at some point, could have been maybe six months ago, could have been maybe five years ago, but they sat there, they took the test, and these are the questions that you're looking at. And these are the best questions to help you practice to see what's actually gonna be on the test. The next awesome resource is, yes, you know, Magoosh SAT. Why is it awesome? Well, we break down all of the concepts that you can see on the SAT in easy to chew and digest pieces. So mental math, for instance, well, we got you covered. We have a bunch of lesson videos that cover those concepts and tips and strategies to help you there. But if you're not using the right resources, then you might be learning things that aren't really helping you out and might be wasting your time. The next tip is to take practice tests. Now, just a second ago, I mentioned the College Board test, the official test. Well, guess what? To really improve on the SAT, you actually have to take these at home. And no, I'm not talking about the night before at 1 a.m., which would actually be the morning of. We're talking about using practice tests throughout your SAT prep process. Why? Because you're gonna be able to look how you've done on the test, see where your weaknesses are, those areas where you're struggling, and figure out what you can do to get better. I often recommend to students to take at least three practice tests during prep, but if you have a long time, meaning more than a month, you might consider even taking four or more. The next tip is to review your mistakes. Many students don't actually do this. What they will do is see which questions they got wrong, go to the back of the book, look at the scoring table and say, okay, I got 600, pretty good, better than last week. Okay, now I'm gonna go out and have some fun or whatever it might be. The point is though, the learning happens when you go directly back to the questions that you miss and you try to figure out why you missed them. And so you wanna make sure that you review the questions that you missed, 
so that you're actually learning something about the way that you performed on that test. The next tip might sound a lot like the last tip. This tip is called learn from your mistakes and I want to tell you how that's different than simply reviewing your mistakes. When you're reviewing your mistakes, you're looking at that specific problem. What did I do wrong? Oh, I see. It said the closest integer value and I totally missed the word integer. So I ended up picking a fraction as an answer. Oh, that's terrible. And then you move on to the next one. That's reviewing and that's fine. You can definitely improve that way. But what does it mean to actually learn from your, your mistakes? Well, what that means is to find a deeper pattern about what's going on when you're missing something. For instance, going back to that previous question with the integer, did you miss the word integer because it was at the very beginning of the test and you were rushing to get to the harder questions? Oh, that's a really good takeaway. And a great idea is to write down these takeaways. After you're done reviewing all the questions on the test, write down three or four takeaways and then the next time you take a practice test, right before you take it, take a look at those takeaways and that way you're not going to make similar mistakes on that practice test. The next tip is to work on pacing. Now, according to the other tips, you might be doing really well at learning from your mistakes and really growing as a test taker. But what happens oftentimes is we're not paying attention to how long we're taking to do things. And so pacing is a very important part of the test that you want to focus on. So what does this mean? Well, this means when you take a practice test, figure out where you could have gone maybe a little bit faster and where you could have gone maybe a little bit slower and then come up with a game plan for the next practice test based on your learnings from the previous practice test. And so even if you know all the concepts, you're doing all the strategies well, if you don't apply it learnings from pacing, then you're not doing quite as well as you could on the test. The next tip is to make sure you do a little bit every day. Don't just prep on the weekend, even if it's for three or four hours. All that prep and all that progress you made well, by the time the next Saturday rolls around, it's going to kind of mostly evaporate and you don't want that to happen. So what you can do each day, whether it's five minutes or whether it's half an hour, is to do a little bit of the SAT prep. For instance, you could be waiting for a friend somewhere and you could do a little bit of mental math. 14 times 3, well, let's knock that out. 14 times 3, 42, and then boom, your friend shows up. Who knows exactly? But the key is that you're figuring out times throughout the day to weave in SAT prep. And it can be some math flashcards or it can be growing that mental math brain. So remember, even if you're studying four hours every Saturday, there's a much better way of doing it. And that's doing a little bit every day. If you like what you saw today, then follow the link in the description below. That will take you to sat.magoosh.com where we have a full curriculum that has helped thousands of students ace the SAT. If you want more tips, then click on the videos to the left.